Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea, and this is the podcast where we talk about practical tips that we all can do on a daily basis, which can lead us to finding our inner peace. I know that inner peace is possible. I've been without it. I've found ways to get it. And on this podcast, we talk about ways that we can find it and keep it on a daily basis. On Finding Peace, the podcast where we talk with people about practical ways of finding our inner peace on a daily basis. And today I'm very pleased to have James with us as our guest and uh, like to welcome him to the show. Thank you for having me, Chris. Uh, it's definitely a pleasure, and if you can uh, introduce yourself and kind of share with the audience what you do and uh, what brings you to uh, seeking inner peace. Yeah, I'm Australian-American. I've been living in Los Angeles, California for about 16 years, and I help people sleep better, and I help quit drinking or at the very least reduce their drinking. I uh, I guess you could say I'm a healthpreneur in the sense that I love health, um, very health conscious, and then I create businesses around those health interests. So I quit drinking back in 2010. Uh, I was just a social drinker, nothing too serious, not, not an alcoholic or anything. But in, um, in the years subsequent to that, I just had tremendous breakthroughs in my life. I had more clarity, vision, health, I slept better, attracted better relationships, and uh, like you just mentioned, found a, a level of inner peace that I, I didn't have when I was drinking, even if just you know one or two seemingly innocent drinks a night. And now that I have created sleep products, uh, including my blue light blocking glasses, Swannies, I'm able to sleep particularly well at night, and uh, I just go through my day feeling you know, a lot calmer than uh, in, in previous years when I maybe wasn't so health conscious. That, that's really awesome to hear that making that change in your life was able to affect every uh, aspect of your life. What, what kind of led you to make that change in the first place? Well, I was very much just a societal drinker in the sense that, you know, I'd have one or two drinks a night, nothing too serious, maybe a glass of wine with dinner, maybe a beer, just to seemingly take the edge off every night. But, you know, I did this over a number of years and I woke up one morning and I looked in the mirror and I'd realized that I'd put on, you know, about 20, 25 pounds over the course of a year, year and a half, just very gradual. So I didn't really notice it until this morning. And I was tired looking, I was weathered. It wasn't a disaster or anything. I was, it was, I was just average, you know? I was looking in the mirror and I was like, you're just kind of average. You're about a six and a half out of 10 in your energy, in your outlook, in your, your money-making ability. It was okay, just, just kind of like, eh. Just phoning it in a little bit. And I wonder what it would be like if I quit drinking for 30 days. And so I did. I quit drinking for 30 days and I lost 13 pounds of fat in 30 days. Mm. My, skin, my skin looked uh, noticeably better. Um, I slept better. I would wake up in the morning with more clarity and focus and energy. I started attracting... Uh, a much more agreeable type of person into my life. So when I became health conscious and, and at peace, I realized I started meeting other people who were health conscious and at peace as like attracts like. And, uh, you know, subse 
subsequently to that, I created a, a program called the 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge, which has now helped tens of thousands of people around the world quit drinking for at least 30 days. And many of those people have now continued to live an alcohol free lifestyle and are enjoying all the benefits that an alcohol free lifestyle brings. So, uh, you know, it wasn't a rock bottom moment for me at all. I, it was more just like a gradually over over a year or two, I just went, oh, this drinking is slowing me down just a, just a little bit. And I'm, I'm now recognizing that just that one or two drinks a night is costing me health, wealth, love, and happiness. So I did something about it and I haven't drunk since. That, that's really awesome. And just to clarify, you know, for our listeners that you're not necessarily talking about people who are alcoholic or problem drinking. It sounds like you're just talking about you just felt that the alcohol wasn't helping and you got rid of that in your life to find ways of living that were healthier and, and more helpful. Yeah, I wasn't an alcoholic and I don't really know how to help alcoholics. I, I really, I was just a, a casual drinker who realized that his drinking was slowing him down and holding him back. And I help people who realize that their drinking, even if it's just, you know, a seemingly innocent glass or two a night, is also holding them back just a little bit. So I've created a blueprint, if you like, to rewire your brain to look at outstanding health as the reward, to look at alcohol as not something fun or pleasurable, but to look at alcohol-free living as fun and pleasurable. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it's really, my system uh, really helps those people who are not alcoholics, but they just realize that their drinking habits are slowing them down. And, you know, there are enough studies out there to show the negative effects of even small amounts of alcohol. So I, I really can understand what you're saying. And myself, as a 20-some-year um, addiction counselor, can definitely reiterate what you're saying about how lives have been totally changed by, um, you know, stopping uh, that behavior and moving on and filling the time of that drinking with other positive things in life. Yeah. I'm, I'm, if we look at it for, as a financial cost, I think that what people spend on drinking is largely inconsequential compared to what they are not generating for themselves in income because of their drinking. So if someone say, let, let's do a little exercise. Okay. Um, let's just say that you, you earned, let's say, $60,000 a year. Let's say you either had a job or you were in a business and you were generating $60,000 a year with your existing drinking habits, however small they may be. Maybe it's, you know, a glass a night, half a bottle a night, or, you know, a few, uh, uh, drinking a few nights a week, okay? Okay. Now, <clears throat> now if you were drinking like I just described, your, your effectiveness to, to produce money or to be effective in your job is about a 7 out of 10. Let's say you're not a huge drinker, you're a sometimes drinker. So let's say that you're, you're operating at about a 7 out of 10. Because when you drink, you don't sleep as well, you're tired, you're irritable, you're not as focused. You're kind of like operating about a 7 out of 10. So let's just say you, you're operated a 7 out of 10 and you make $60,000. Now, let's just say that you learned this system for quitting drink and staying quit and you started living the alcohol-free lifestyle where you just didn't drink alcohol at all or maybe only on some occasions. Now, you are potentially operating at a 9 out of 10 which means you have greater clarity, greater focus, greater strategic thinking, you have more energy, so you produce more, so you're more effective in your job or in your business. Now let's say you have a job. 
The difference between a 7 out of 10 and a 9 out of 10 in your effectiveness in your job could mean a promotion, a raise, being promoted from an account manager to an executive manager, for example. So your salary would go for, from, let's say, $60,000 to, let's say, $80,000. Right? Let's say 60 to 80. Mm -hmm. So while you're drinking at a 7 out of 10, you're making $60,000. But if you go alcohol-free and you're operating at a 9 out of 10, you now make $80,000, which is $20,000 more than what you're currently making. So your drinking is actually effectively costing you at least $20,000 per year. You only spend, say, $3,000 on actually purchasing alcohol. That's not the cost of drinking. The cost is $23,000 because you're not getting that raise, that promotion at work. So when you do the math like that and you figure out what your number is, it's pretty shocking. It's frightening, actually, when you realize, wow, just pouring myself this glass of red wine is costing me $20,000 a year. So what I, I like in what you're saying here is instead of even trying to hit somebody at the belief level of, you know, helping them to say, look, you know, you, you need to stop the drinking so that you can live a healthier life. What you're saying is let's just talk on an, even a practical level. If you want to make money and save money, here's what you do. Yeah, that's just from the financial aspect. Exactly. Of it. But if we look at it from a health aspect around weight loss, for example, let's just say you're listening and you want to lose 20 pounds. Let's just pick a, pick a figure, 20 pounds. Well, when you drink, you don't sleep as well. And when you don't sleep as well, your metabolism doesn't work as effectively as it should. And when you wake up tired and irritable, you're more likely to reach for a sugary food to try and give yourself a little energy boost. Or you're more likely to put cream and a couple of sugars in your coffee or to eat a Kit Kat or a Snickers bar or some or a Gatorade or a Red Bull or something just to give you a little bit of an energy boost in the morning because you didn't sleep very well. So now you're putting in more calories, you're putting on more weight, now you crash because you have that insulin spike, so now you're hungry again, so now you're reaching for more carb-laden foods, and then you're just waiting to get home so you can sit down on the sofa and relax and pour yourself another glass of wine or have a beer just to relax after a stressful day at work. And now you're drinking calories, because alcohol is just dead calories, and, those, and uh, drinking alcohol increases your appetite, so now you're wanting to eat more food, so now you're putting on more weight, and now you're poorly and you're waking up and the whole cycle continues. So your drinking is costing you those 20 pounds. Whereas if you go alcohol free, you're not eating as much, you're not eating as frequently, you're making healthier choices, you're sleeping better, you're creating more energy, you're burning more fat, and those 20 pounds fall off. So your drinking is essentially keeping 20 pounds of fat on you in this example. That, that's amazing. I mean, when it's put into the numbers like that, it is just, it, it's almost astronomical. I mean, I, I've never seen it put specifically that way. Well, we can, we, we can do it for love and happiness as well. If we just look at it as a love, uh, love example, if you are single right now and you're drinking even just a little bit, well, guess what? You don't look as good. You don't feel as good. Toxins show up in your skin. They've done studies that show that even a glass of wine per night is enough to show uh, to increase the visible signs of wrinkles and crow's feet on your face and on your forehead and around your eyes. Because you're drinking, you don't sleep as well. When you don't sleep as well, you have little bags under your eyes but your skin doesn't glow as much. So now you look in the mirror and you start to find faults in your appearance. So then you go out and you're not as confident and so you don't attract someone because of how you feel. 
and so you remain single. Now you're relying on drink to, on alcohol as a social crutch. You can't go out to a bar or a restaurant without having a drink. So you have the drink just to relax your nerves because you're about to go on a date with someone maybe. And now of course you're just pouring those toxins into your body again. And then you're waking up the next morning feeling lousy because you had a couple of drinks and you're unable to attract that dream partner of yours because you just don't feel confident. You're not fully happy with yourself. So you could make an argument that that seemingly innocent glass of wine each night is also costing you your love life. <laughs> True. Maybe a legacy is not created. You don't meet the man or woman of your dreams. You don't have the children. You don't have, uh, you don't create a whole, a whole legacy, a whole generation because you've been unable to attract your dream partner or maybe worse, you are, are able to attract a partner, but it's not a partner that's appropriate or suitable for you. Maybe you've just phoned it in, so to speak. You've just accepted, you've settled for a six or a seven out of 10 relationship. And now you, you know, you are married and you do have kids, but it, you're not in a hap as happy a relationship as you, as you could have been. So you could, you could argue that your drinking is costing you a great relationship, an outstanding relationship or any romantic relationship at all. And it's possible that it might also be costing you your happiness level. All the studies show that the happier the person, the more money that you are able to generate, the happier the person, the, the healthier the person, the happier the person, the more attractive the person, the more attractive the person, the more you attract attractive people and healthy people and happy people into your life. So if, you, if you'd like to keep living at a six and a half and a seven out of 10, then that's okay. But if you want to live life at a nine out of 10 and live an outstanding life in love, health, wealth, and happiness, then alcohol free will get you there. So for those who are listening and saying that this makes sense, they see how it's very holistic and all encompassing, what, what would you suggest as some of the first steps if they want to start to make this change in their lives? Well, selfishly, I would first of all encourage you to just go to 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com and have a look at a video that I produced there with my story, um, before and after photos. And I also outlined some, some training there on how to uh, to to quit drinking so um, but even if you were not to do that then I would start with uh, deciding how long you're gonna go how you how long you're gonna try alcohol free I would suggest 30 days just like my 30 day no alcohol challenge program does remove visual cues of alcohol from your home so you want to just get it out of your home altogether you want to tell people that you are going alcohol free and you want to get at least one accountability partner because change occurs amongst other people. If you try to do it by yourself on brute willpower, your chances of success are very slim. But if you have, excuse me, if you have one or two people or a group of people supporting you and encouraging you and holding you accountable and even better, they do it with you, then that change becomes possible. Now, at 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge, we have a community of about 1,300 people in a closed Facebook group at the moment. And so if you were to take 30 days off, you could get the support and encouragement of other people in that community. But even if you didn't do my official program and you just did it yourself, the magic ingredient is accountability. Uh, and that means having someone doing it with you, having a group of people doing it with you, proclaiming on your social media that you are doing it and, and asking your followers to hold you uh, accountable, writing down a contract to yourself saying that you will do it, and then just doing it, getting it done. But I would definitely encourage you to do it within a group of other people versus just trying to rely on brute willpower because the first way is, is fun and, and, and your chances of success are high doing it on your own is not fun and your chances of success are slim. 
And I would encourage that as well, you know, making life changes with others who are doing so makes a lot of sense. And, and that's why a lot of the self-help groups are um, so effective in helping people reach those goals. So how do you start to motivate someone who's on the fence right now, who, you know, kind of hears what you're saying, but is like, well, life is kind of okay for me right now. So um, doesn't really matter so much. How do we start to motivate someone to, you know, really take in what you're saying? Ask yourself this question. What is it costing me to drink? And I don't mean just money. What is it costing you? What's the opportunity cost? Because you know what? Everything might be okay. But let's look at those two letters. Okay. Now, okay means, you know, you're okay. It's all right. Nothing's too bad. Nothing's horrible. But it's kind of like blah, average, mediocre. It's just okay. Now, if you're okay with okay, then great. Don't do anything. Just stop listening to this podcast and listen to another one of the show's podcast. Right. Don't turn off to another show, obviously. You keep listening to Chris, but <laughs> switch, <laughs> switch off right now if this isn't resonating with you. But let me tell you something. If you want to live life at a 9 out of 10, then it starts with healthy habits. And when I quit drinking in 2010, it opened up a cascade of healthy habits for me. I quit one habit, which was quitting drinking. This is what happened to me. I lost 13 pounds. I landed my dream job hosting the iconic television show Sports Center on ESPN. I started two very successful businesses. Forbes magazine voted me one of the top 25 networkers in the world in 2015. I started hanging out with with very successful people like Elon Musk, the billionaire, Mark Cuban, the billionaire. I met my childhood idol, John Bon Jovi, the rock star. I started helping tens of thousands of people all over the world quit drinking. I started helping tens of thousands of people all over the world sleep better through my, my sleep company, Swan Week Sleep. I attracted amazing relationships. I got the body that I always dreamed of having and that nature intended me to have. I was calmer. I was at peace. I was happier. And nothing but good things has happened since I gave up drinking alcohol. And I wasn't even an alcoholic. I wasn't even a big drinker. Right. I, was just, I was just like a normal drinker. I, I rarely, if ever, got drunk. I was just the guy that went, you know, had a drink and ordered a drink at a bar and was out at dinner and had a, you know, shared a bottle of wine and, you know, I, I was always fine to drive home. I was never over the limit. Like I was just a normal drinker, but guess what? Just being a normal drinker helped me put on a bunch of weight that I didn't want to put on, made my sleep crappy, left me tired and irritable and lethargic and made me live an okay life. And I wasn't okay with an okay life. I want an outstanding life. So again, if you're okay, then don't do anything. Just keep doing the, the things that you're doing. Keep drinking. That's fine if you're fine with it. But if you want something more, if you think that something is missing, if you know that you have potential inside of you in your health, in your wealth, in your love, and your happiness, then just try 30 days alcohol free to get a glimpse of what it feels like. Well, you know, when you mentioned that challenge, you know, for people, one of the things that I always talk to my clients about when, you know, they want to say that they're not an alcoholic, then I always say, fine, then just don't drink, you know, for the next couple of weeks. You know, so if you're not an alcoholic, it's not a big deal. Just don't drink for the next couple of weeks. You know, and I think I, you know, like within your challenge, because it's like, you know, well, what, what do you have to lose? If you just don't drink for 30 days and you don't feel better or you don't have the benefits you're talking about, then go back to drinking. Yeah, I mean, look, if you've never tried it, then just try it. You'll be shocked at how much, like, how better your sleep is. 
if you if you can sleep great, I'm telling you, your whole life is so much better. It's incredible. <laughs> I mean, I I mean, I've now created sleep products. I mean, I I'm the creator of a, of a, of a somewhat famous blue light blocking glasses um, brand called Swanwick, and these glasses are called Swannies. And these these glasses have the orange lens in them, and and you wear these orange lens glasses at night time to block out the artificial light from your computer screen and your iPad and your kitchen and bathroom lights and and um, you know all of that light if you if you expose yourself to it it tricks your body and brain into thinking that it's daytime and so you don't produce as much melatonin but if you wear these swannies blue light blocking glasses the orange lens blocks the blue light your body's able to naturally produce as much melatonin as it, as nature intended it to produce and then ultimately when you remove the glasses just before sleep you end up falling asleep quicker you sleep deeper and and ultimately you wake up feeling refreshed and so it's the same concept chris it's given give them a try it's like with drinking go alcohol free for 30 days and see and with your sleep wear a pair of blue light blocking glasses for 30 nights just before you go to sleep and just see test it be a mad scientist test all of these things and you'll be surprised at just how much of a of a of a leverage that these things can be for your entire life that, that sounds awesome and, and I really encourage people to give this a shot because it is all about making change and one of the things you keep talking about is the actions that we need to take and for me that's what's most important when we start looking about life change is we can't just talk about it or read about it we really need to step up to the plate and take action about it you've given us a lot of things that we can do for action. And I really encourage people to check out your website to understand what they need to do to, you know, take this challenge to do it well and come up with the life changing results that you're talking about. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, just give yourself the gift of outstanding health and you will give yourself the gift of an outstanding life. Totally agree. So I know you mentioned a couple of your websites and I, I'll definitely have those sites in the show notes. So again, encourage people to go to your sites to check out what you have. But what is the best way for people to learn more about you or to get in touch with you? Yeah, so 30daynoalcoholchallenge.com if you're looking to quit drinking within a group of, of other people. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, I do also have a program called Project 90, which helps entrepreneurs quit drinking for at least 90 days. And you could find that at jameswanwick.com slash project 90. And then follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'm happy to DM and, and message you there uh, at James Swanwick. That's S W A N. W-I-C-K, and then any sleep products, you can go to swanwicksleep.com. You can find our blue light blocking glasses. You can, uh, we have a 100% pure silk eye mask, which blocks out a lot of the, the, a lot of the light. And, uh, you know, we've got a whole lot of other stuff there at the, at the sleep company. Right. You know, I've, I've looked over the site and it's, you know, really extensive as, as far as products. I you know, learned a lot myself in looking at what's available and, uh, you know, what you all have to offer. So I, you know, want to thank you again for joining us. This has really been a uh, inspiring conversation to learn about your story and to understand, you know, better what we can do so that we can find some inner peace within our own lives. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode, and I hope that the message in this episode has inspired you and given you some of the tools that you need to find peace in your life. If you have found those tools and you found this to be inspiring and you know of others who also need these tools, please share this podcast with them. Let them know of the opportunities out there that they too 
can find their inner peace. Thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you for listening. And have a very mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.